right, so we got the outdoor unit set, and now we're going to go ahead and pull the Schrader valves out. All right, we're going to flow nitrogen through this at 3 psi. So we have our nitrogen bottle, we have our flow meter right here, and we have a regulator. All right, so we're just taking the valve caps off right now. This is a Schrader valve replacement tool, but I'm just going to use this to pull the Schraders out. So all we did is we bent the refrigerant lines all right, in place. So we bent all this by hand in place. All right, and now we're just going ahead and pulling the uh, Schrader valve out. You might hear some chickens. I hear them walking around as well right now. All right, so we got both Schrader valves out. Now you want to make sure you, you get these out because you can melt these while brazing. All right, so we're going to set them off to the side somewhere where we're not going to lose them. All right, and the first spot we're going to braze is inside. At the end of our coil, we're going to braze the suction line. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here on this suction line. We're going to attach in. All right. We're going to flow nitrogen through the whole system and back out through this liquid line right here. All right. So, we're going to open up our nitrogen. You always want to make sure that this thumb screws out before you turn your nitrogen on. All right. And we're going to turn this up to about 50 psi G on our secondary regulator right there. And then we're going to turn this flow meter up to 3 psi. Okay. There's a floating ball inside, and depending on how high the floating ball sits at, tells you what the what pressure the nitrogen is flowing at. So right now we have it set at 3 psi, and it should be coming out this port here. But we have not brazed anything yet, so we may be leaking out of joints and stuff like that, but that's okay. It's still getting the oxygen out of the lines before we braze. All right, so we're going to go ahead inside, and we're going to start our brazing. All right, so we're in at the indoor unit. All right, and we're going to be brazing the suction line. We have the nitrogen flowing through the suction line, okay, coming this way and in through the coil and exiting through the liquid line. Presently, I have a tubing cutter holding the Armaflex insulation down, all right. It's, I did not turn it at all. It's just barely snug on the pipe, and it's just holding that down, all right. This liquid line was a little short, all right. So what we did is we just put a piece of pipe here in a coupling. I am not brazing that in. I'm just flowing nitrogen through, okay because I'm actually going to be brazing outside as well. All right, I could actually just take this pipe off and just let the nitrogen come in here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let it go outside. All right, so this coupling will be replaced by the filter dryer, which will be the last thing that's brazed into the system, okay? And you always put these filter dryers in the inside of the house, not in the outside, because there's uh, steel on that, and that's just going to go ahead and uh, rot on you. All right, as far as these plastic pieces are concerned, um, right where you would normally install, right around there. All right, I usually just cut these, all right, and just slip them back on when you're done. Now, this uh, thermostatic expansion valve, this is a, an evaporator coil that has the TXD bulb already installed, so if you were to braze here, you'd want to do it really quick. You really don't want that, that bulb on there, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take that bulb off, and I'm going to put new uh, foam tape around this when I'm all done, okay? I would advise doing this. I, I would not recommend brazing it while while the bulb is just sitting right there on the line. All right, that would definitely not be good. All right, I mean it's do it's possible you can do it, but just for safety's sake, I'm going to take that off the line because it's going to get awful hot right there. All right, so I think we're about ready to breeze. I have a cup of water. I've got a wet rag here. All right. I'm going to put the wet rag underneath of what I'm brazing just in case anything falls. All right, so we got, like I said, we got 3 psi right now flowing through, and we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm using an air acetylene torch. All right, and the other thing is you might want to make sure that uh, you don't have any smoke detectors hooked into an alarm system uh, that would go off while you're doing this. You want to take precautions with that, especially if you're on. Um, really expensive houses that have have um, them tied into the alarms. Actually, that's more of a, uh, a normal thing now, but uh, 
you maybe want to cover them up with a plastic cover or something, but absolutely make sure that that cover is off before you leave. All right. Um, but if the fire company has to come out, they're going to end up charging you on that just because the fire alarm went off. Here we go. rod is hot make sure you don't set that down on something all right it'll burn a hole right through it we're going to take our wet rag and we're going to cool this down we have a lot of black oxidation you see i'm rubbing it off right there but that's not occurring on the inside of the pipe so that's good because we have our nitrogen flowing, flowing through That one's done. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to braise this liquid line. Right here, we're not going to braise this coupling in because, like I said, this is going to be the last thing that we're going to braise in is the filter dryer. So we're going to braise this part next. Then we're going to go out to the outdoor unit. We're going to braise those two joints. All right. And then we're going to come back in and we're going to braise the filter dryer. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do this line now. And we want to get our, our rag kind of cool again, right? Some nice cold water. All right. And we're going to put that on the TXV on the line. This way it'll keep the TXV from absorbing too, too much heat while we're doing this. You want to get in and get out. That's what you want to do with your brazing. You don't want to spend a whole lot of time there. So you're going to be heating stuff up. You don't want to heat up. As soon as possible. You want to verify that you have that braze filled in on all sides. Keep the heat of the flame towards the back of the fitting so you draw the braze to it. All right. You know, inside the fitting, you want to make sure you, you fill the whole joint up with braze. Not too, too much because if you keep putting your rod on there, rod on there, rod on there, you're going to end up uh, clogging the screen that's actually inside the pipe. And you're going to diagnose that later as a restriction or something, but you just want to braze in, but you want to make sure you have a nice thick crown on there. All right, as well. So now, now that that's done, we're going to move out to the outdoor unit. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.